Hello, welcome to another edition of the Fifth Quarter. I'm Mike Shirecki, sports editor of HeraldStandard.com, joined as always by George Von Benko, author of Memory Lane, the book and the column, and a WMBS radio personality. Uh, as a talk show, what, 10 to noon on Saturday? 10 to correct? noon on Saturday, and I'm sure one of the big topics uh, is going to be the Steelers' trip to the left coast yeah. to take on the San Francisco 49ers on Monday night. And we've already had news this week. It, it looks like they will be, pending the appeal, which I don't think he's going to win, they're going to be without James Harrison. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, deservedly so, I guess you could say. Uh, well, I... I thought for sure, like everybody else in the press box did, that he was going to get fined. I was a little surprised by the suspension, and so was defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau, who I had a nice chat with mm -hmm. uh, at the Steelers practice facility. And you know, he pointed out that's the first time that a player has been suspended in 25 years, going back to when I think it was Charles Martin body slam Jim McMahon into the mm -hmm. turf uh, uh, at Soldier Field. Uh, and. Uh, no, that's should, a long time to be without yeah, a... Uh, well, we should yeah. couch that by saying the first time he, a player has been suspended for making a football play. Football play, right. Yes. yes. Uh, because the... Uh, there have been other suspensions for other things. Sue's guy from the Lions, and yeah. who was the other guy? Uh, uh, was it the Cowboys, or did he stomp on the Cowboy? No, who the heck was that guy? few years ago, defensive uh, lineman, I believe. I, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, and I can't remember guy, his name. He's somewhere else in the lake. Oh, is, is it uh, the guy who was with the Redskins, and then now he's with Tampa, maybe? Or Albert Hainsworth. Yes. Okay. Yeah, Albert Hainsworth yeah. was suspended when yeah. he was with Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but th those were non-football plays. They, they this was, a, this was in the course of a game, of a game this right. first time in 25 years. So right. that's what got LeBeau uh, a little bit. He said that's a long time to go and, and for a play like that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, And, you know, I've heard a lot of the, you know, excuses, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Mike Tomlin saying in his press conference that... Um, it was a foul. He hit it. He yeah. said it was a foul, but he also tried to couch it by saying, you know, we're, we were disappointed for James because of all the hard work he did to improve how he plays the game. Well, he, he needs more work then. If he's what? still leading with the helmet. Well, uh, yeah, but his agent made a very good point. I heard some comments from his agent uh, today that uh, the body of work, 17 games, that's more than a full NFL season with, uh, with over 100 tackles, and I forget how many sacks it was. Without having another incident, that that's you know, yeah. that's all well and good. But yeah. you know, if he wanted, he should have kept the streak going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it was an easy play to make without using, without leading with your helmet. Yeah. Well, as I said, I, I had no problem with him being fined, and right. it's going to be a substantial fine. Missing a game is seventy three thousand dollars at yeah. least. Yeah. Uh, I had no problem with him being fined. I really thought that uh, it well, was a little excessive with the the uh, uh, the suspension. And, you know, especially in light of the fact that this is a very, very important game for the Steelers, well, you, you, you know, you're, know you're, you're penalizing the whole team. The only, yeah. Right. The yeah. only, that's yeah. the only thing I'll, I'll give you on this is, you know, it is penalizing the team. But, it, again, it falls back to James Harrison. He has to realize yeah. his, right. his play is starting to affect the team. So he has to straighten up and he can't, you know, it, it's almost like a, an alcoholic who goes out on a binge one night. Mm -hmm. He can't do that. Right, and he can't do this. Yeah. He, he, well, there's no question that the, the NFL he, he should is, play is, without is, a helmet. is sending a message. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, for uh, sure. And, and uh, it, they're they're particularly sending a message. Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of people are taking the tack that the well, NFL is out to get the. See, I don't believe no, that one bit. I, I don't either. Yeah. And, and you know, if they're sending a message, let's hope James Harrison receives. It. Well, that's you, been we the, the crux of some columns this week that he yeah. should uh, right. uh, get the message. Meanwhile, they have other problems. I mean, oh, yeah. you've got a quarterback who's limping around and hasn't practiced. Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, a center who's got a high ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the, the time off that they got probably came at a real good time, the 11 yeah, days between yeah, games. Yeah, and I think, you know, of all the things we mentioned, including James Harrison probably not being available for this game, they can overcome James Harrison. Um, They've proven that. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're getting Lamar Woodley back, and right. the, the name of the other linebacker escapes me right now who replaced... Uh, Jason World. Jason World very, very well. Yeah. Yeah, he'll, more, he'll more than adequately shore up the defense for them. Well, I asked LeBeau oh. about him the other day, and he is really high on the way yeah. he has played. He's he's gotten more and more comfortable mm -hmm. as they've used him, and he has played well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, he, he, you know, you never want to lose a guy like Pouncey, but 
They that line shown, has gone through so much. Yeah, yeah, but you know what they've shown with Ligurski that he can play center. You know, for my money, I think I would have Trey Essex in the starting lineup instead, instead of, of Kimoyatu. Instead of Kimoyatu, who is and who? he's going to be on a short leash if he does play. Well, there's no you question, know. and Mike Tomlin pointed out that uh, you know he's got to either change his technique or change something, but he's, he's constantly he's getting get a flag. Yeah. yeah, he's going to get a seat. Yeah, uh, you know the the key injury to me is is still the quarterback with. With Ben Roethlisberger, the Steelers can win the game. Without him, I don't know. And uh, just knowing Ben's track record and the way he's coming. And I I'll tell you, in the locker room the other day, there wasn't a single player that I talked to when I mentioned Ben, oh, he's going to play. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. they're just used to, you know, he right. said, you know, it's going to take a sledgehammer to knock him out of a game. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. But, you know, with the high ankle sprain, I mean, he's never had one of these before. He could get to the middle of the second quarter and say, hey, you know, right. This isn't feeling too good. I don't think I can do this anymore. You never know. I, it would surprise me if that happened. But you know, meanwhile, you look at the Steelers' problems. They are facing a formidable task. Too. Oh, yeah. uh, San Francisco mm -hmm. lost to Arizona last mm -hmm. week. Uh, they're ten and three. They're going to be hopping. They've already clinched the division title, but they're going to be stung a little bit by the loss to Arizona. Right. And, and they're still playing for a bye. I believe. They're still playing for a bye. Yeah. And uh, it's facing another Harbaugh. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, so you know the history there. Yeah. Uh, but um, who would have thunk before the season? Now, let's let's uh, be honest. I didn't expect this from San Francisco no. with a first-year head coach no. coming in there who, who hadn't had a lot of NFL experience. Eight and eight uh, would have been a yeah, pretty and good year it's for been a tremendous year for them. Oh yeah, yes it has. Uh, of course, they did. They got, they had the luxury of playing a fourth-place schedule. I they did, yeah, uh, and. Uh, the other thing that uh, Ryan Monday pointed out to me that the, the coaching staff pointed out to him this week, he says, now let's look at the pedigree on that team. They're playing throughout the squad, uh, just maybe starters, we, we took a, a, a brief look at it, at least 13 first-round picks. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good pedigree. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. And, you know, another, another thing in their favor, I, I failed to mention a, a moment ago, uh, was that they play in the uh, NFC West. Which is probably the worst division it's of football right now. Two, four... So, you know, five to six wins right there. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, so a lot of things have gone their way, uh, mm -hmm. but other than uh, uh, the Baltimore game, mm -hmm. they've shown an ability, which surprised me for a team like this, to go on the road and travel mm -hmm. across the country and win some ball games. Mm -hmm. They've done that this year. Uh, Alex Smith has played better than I thought he was capable of playing. Exactly. But, you know, yeah, I mean, he's been become a very good game manager. You have, and you have to give uh, Jimmy Harbaugh a lot of credit for that. He kind of resurrected Alex Smith's career. Well, uh, everybody thought that that was a bust. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and he, he may end up being still a bust. Yeah. But he's but playing lights out this year. He's playing lights out this year. He's not making mistakes. He's managing the game. And he's got a dynamic running back in Frank Gore, Frank Gore who is so. going to cause the Steelers problems. Yes. You know, you know. Uh, if anybody can cause yeah. the Steelers problems in the running game, Frank Gore would be the guy. And he's got some good people to throw to. Michael Crabtree, who, you know, at first everybody Number thought one. what was going on with him because mm -hmm. he held out. and then, you know, yeah. But he's starting to show what he was made of, right. the kid out of Texas Tech. Ted Ginn has mm -hmm. done some good things for him. Vernon Davis, the big, Davis tight, the big tight, tight end, yeah. and then defensively, uh, they're one of the top t top teams in the in the NFL. Uh, Navarro Bowman, the former Penn State linebacker, mm -hmm. Carlos Rogers, uh, uh, Patrick Willis is still a question mark. He did not play last week against mm -hmm. Arizona, uh, but he's a top flight talent as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, uh, you know, the special teams for the 49ers are right up there too. Uh, former uh, Eagles kicker. Mm, David is, Akers. David Akers. David Akers, the former Louisville he's, star, he's and then they've got five field goals a week. They've got mean, the punter from Pitt, who's yeah, going very well. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, formidable opponent. Uh, it's not that we didn't see this coming. I guess from from the midpoint of the season on, we sort of figured everyone it, kind of started circling. Before this. the season, I didn't have no. this one circled at no, all. Yeah. No, except for a long, yeah, long, a long trip, trip yeah. across the coast, uh, yeah. which is never easy. Uh, for a Monday night game, the Steelers won't uh, leave to go out there until Sunday. Uh, spend Sunday night there and have all of a good bit of, good bit of the day to sit around on Monday uh, and wait for wait for the game to come around. So, uh, but you know, it could be one of the tougher tests for the remaining part of the season for the Steelers. Well, uh, well, it is the toughest test of the games that are remaining, I think. Uh, yeah. If you look at you know St. Louis coming in here, uh, they haven't played well. You, you still mm -hmm. got Cleveland. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is uh, you know. 
Yeah. The, and, the and, biggest game on their schedule right you know, now. And uh, ironically, the Sunday night game this week, uh, the only one the Steelers will be able to, to watch on TV because of the travel is Baltimore. It's Baltimore at San Diego, which looks like a very winnable game for San Diego now. It, it does. Uh, you know, uh, it, uh, as I've said before, the only thing, the caveat I will say there is you don't know what San Diego team is going to no, show up because right. they're, they're right. like Jekyll and Hyde. But you know what? They've been, but they they've certainly have the talent well lately. Yeah, yeah. In the last couple of weeks, they've really, really turned it on. Um, you know, it's almost like a Norv Turner, uh, Philip Rivers switch that some of they turn on once December comes around. Well, yeah, they're in trouble. Is Norv going to, you know, so. Yeah, he may not. Yeah, well, yeah. right. But yeah. I mean, they. Uh, Annually, they start slow, finish strong, get to the playoffs. You know, they're in the middle of one of those runs right now, although they didn't start necessarily slow. I think they had their little hiccup in the middle of they the year. They had their hiccup in the middle of the year. But certainly, if you look at that roster in San Diego, mm -hmm. there's enough talent there mm -hmm. to beat Paul. There's no enough, question. Yeah. Enough talent there to entice one William Laird Coward yeah. off of the NBC yeah. Studios yeah. Uh, or CBS, excuse me. CBS, yeah, CBS let's get it right now. You don't want to put him yeah. in the wrong network. Yeah. Now he's, you know, no, but uh, he might have his choice though. There's going to be some other openings too. We always saw Miami. We've and heard that. even as far back as Jerome Bettis, uh, whenever he predicted that uh, whichever season it was would be Bill Cowher's last. Uh, at the same time, he said he would love to have the New York Giants job. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and that may be over. And then here. they went through uh, their thing, although that was a big win they had over Dallas, right. which, which really put them in the driver's seat again. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, getting back to this game, uh, what are your thoughts? You, you think this, that they can you go know, out there and win this game? I'm going to stick with what I said before. If Ben Roethlisberger plays, they win the game. If anyone else plays quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, I don't think they're going to win. And I, I guess the the word was that they are planning on activating Dennis Dixon. Just, uh, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 just in case he, right. he would be their third quarterback. Right. Uh, but I agree with you. You, you know, uh, even a, a half speed Ben, I think, would mu muster right. enough to, to to win this game. And the defense is playing very well right now, and you got to count on that happening yeah. again. You know. Well, I think the point really is this, though, George, with Ben Roethlisberger in the game. The defense has to respect the passing game. Exactly. Yeah. With him not in the game, I don't care if it's Dennis Dixon or Charlie Batch, it's just gang up on the running game. And that's all the defense has to do. I don't believe the passing game is a, is a viable threat no. without Ben Roethlisberger yeah. under center. And uh, so what I'm saying is uh, uh, I like the Steelers in a squeaker, mm -hmm. uh, a defensive battle uh, to some extent, because I don't think either team's going to score an awful lot of points mm -hmm. against the other team's defense. Mm -hmm. I like a squeaker. Uh, with Roethlisberger at the helm. If he's not there, uh, I, I, all, bets are, all bets are off and uh, <laughs> take it off the board. <laughs> you going to put a score on that or uh, just a squeaker? 17-14, uh, uh, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, let me put a score on mine too. Uh, with Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to say 21-15. Okay. Uh, without Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to say 15-10. Okay. San Francisco. All right, watch, don't bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and that'll about wrap up this edition of the fifth quarter. I do want to uh, mention to everyone we will only have one fifth quarter next week. Uh, it'll be uh, coming up later in the week uh, with the Steelers playing on Monday night and then coming back with the Saturday. We just kind of. So we'll combine. Yeah, the, we'll, com the, we'll combine the, a review of this uh, uh, 49ers game with a preview, with a preview of, the of St. Louis. Uh, yeah. I don't think the Rams deserve a whole 15 minutes anyway. No. <laughs> All right, that'll wrap up this edition. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Happy holidays. <laughs>